Webflow has released seven, yes, you heard that correct, seven new updates since my last video. And in this video, we're gonna walk through each one in high level overview. Starting with update number one, audit and improve SEO and AEO with Webflow AI. So SEO, as we all know, is search engine optimization. And I've never even heard of this word AEO. I literally had to Google it, which means answer engine optimization. So this is my favorite update so far. And let's quickly jump into it. So right now in Webflow, we can go ahead and access the audit panel by hitting U. And this will allow us to audit the page in greater detail. You can audit the current page or you can audit site wide. Please also note when you hit publish on the top right hand side, it also always suggested improvements on this page. However, now it's even greater. So right now it just says current page, but we can go ahead and switch it to site wide. It covers meta description, meta titles, add schema markup and add alt text throughout the entire website. So let's just say, for example, in the past, we can head over to our asset panel by hitting J. And what you'll do previously is you hit this three dot icon and you hit edit settings. And then right here where it says alt text, you can either have one of two options. One is a descriptive text explaining what that image is. Otherwise, the other option is decorative, which is when an image doesn't really need any explanation. For example, a pattern, you can just hit decorative. So in the past, you can imagine it takes a long time to like type in, this is made in Webflow badge, right? Nowadays, we don't need to do that. We can actually generate the alt text directly through AI, all included. So again, heading back to the audit panel right here, we can go ahead and make sure we're on site wide. We can go ahead and hit add alt text right here. And this will go ahead and list out 61 assets which need alt text. So we can go ahead and hit generate alt text. And this will generate the alt text for every single asset that doesn't have an alt text already. So as you can see at the current time of recording, what this does not generate alt text for is SVG files. Everything else, okay la. So we have PNG or JPEG images or WebP images. And you'll notice right here, if I click into this specific asset right here, you can click into it and it's literally using AI to describe the image. Smiling man, that's myself by the way, in white t-shirt in front of layered screenshots, including a car racing website, code editor and website publishing interface. This is very, very accurate. And once you want to approve it, you can either hit this button right here, tick. If you want to override it, you can hit this gear icon right here. And you can also accept all of them. So I can accept 47 of 61, and this will go ahead and accept all the old tags and just add it in automatic. The next thing you'll notice in this update is that we can add meta descriptions right here, and it goes ahead and calls every single page, including CMS pages now. So you can add meta description using AI, and you can also add the title tags using AI. So this is very similar. If we head over to P for pages, we can go ahead and hit the page settings right here. And you'll notice there's a button next to the title tag that says generate, as well as the meta description. So now you can use AI to crawl your existing page to write an SEO optimized title tag and meta description. If you scroll all the way down, you'll notice it also has a new field called schema markup, which is a JSON LD file, which helps crawlers identify what your page is specifically about, you notice there's a button that says generate schema markup. And once you click into this, it will literally read your page and generate a proper schema. As of now, it even gives you a warning saying schema is generated by AI. It may contain errors or inaccuracy. It should be reviewed and verified before publishing. But as you can see right here, it's pretty close. So we can see that the language is in English. My name is Derek Su, I am a person, or I think I am. And it says the job title is a freelance UI UX designer and Webflow developer and educator. And it's just reading this based on my header one text. Pretty crazy stuff. It also goes into detail about what I know, what services I offer and some of my clients. So obviously you'll double check this, but this is a fantastic way to speed up SEO for your client. And the best thing about this, in my opinion, is it's all free. Like you don't have to pay extra for this functionality at the time of recording this video at least. So let's quickly move on to update number two. Bring data storage to Webflow Cloud. So in this specific update, Webflow is again, appears to be pushing their AI and their cloud storage system. They actually have something called SQLite. 
And again, I'm not going to pretend to be a backend developer, but I'm imagining this is almost like MySQL where you can store a database in the Webflow cloud servers themselves. Obviously the cloud server, you have to pay extra. It's a different pricing. However, this is a fantastic news for Webflow and the capabilities of doing more advanced stuff such as user database, for example. Let's move on to update number three. Search across sites, workspaces, and settings with dashboard quick find. So in this specific update, Webflow allows you in the dashboard to hit command E, which is the exact same functionality in design for quick search, to essentially search everything in your workspace. So you can go ahead and type in a client site, and it also searches client workspaces, like so. Webflow also claims as a bonus that you can rename client workspace. This was very, very hard to find how to do, but essentially if you go back into the workspace, you'll notice sometimes clients don't actually label their workspace. And by default, it's called my workspace. And you can imagine if you're a freelancer like myself, there's a lot of my workspace. You can see right here, I have a lot of them. I don't know what client this is. Webflow claims to have fixed this by letting you rename these workspace, but there's no real easy way to rename it at the time of recording this video. What I found, you can go ahead and hit client management right here. And then from here, depending if you have the correct permissions, it seems like, you can go ahead and head over to that My Workspace right here. You hit this three dot icon, then you can go ahead and hit Edit Client, and you can go ahead and rename the workspace. But from my understanding at the current point in time, this is kind of silly because you don't even know what this workspace is. So it kind of defeats the purpose. So this doesn't really solve the problem at all at this current state. Maybe Webflow will patch it, hopefully it would. Again, you can only edit certain workspaces with certain permissions, it seems, and you can't even know what that workspace is to rename that workspace. <laughs> Let's move on to update number four. Automatically handling for flash of unstyled content, F-O-U-C. So in this specific update, Webflow has claimed with their new GSAP integration that it gets rid of three things. It keeps everything visible while you're designing in the designer. It applies hidden states in CSS before the JS animation runs and it prevents this layout shift where there's weird flashes. So personally, I have not seen this because I don't really use the GSAP new interaction. Let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. So again, to reach the GSAP interactions, we can go ahead and hit over interactions and go ahead and see where it says version. We can switch to interactions with GSAP new. This is the new powerful GSAP animation, which was released a while ago. But in this update, essentially, from my understanding, it just makes it much more improved in performance and there's no longer this really weird glitch when loading animations. That's what I got from reading the article. Let's move on to update number five. Introducing Webflow app gen. So this update, I did have a small tinker around with and it is pretty crazy what Webflow is doing. Again, like I mentioned throughout this video, it seems to me like they're pushing AI because everyone's trying to push AI for some reason. But if we head over to our Webflow account, you'll notice at the top left, right next to the CMS button and in between insights, there's now a new button called App Gen. If we click into this, this opens up an AI prompt to build websites using AI. And the crazy thing about this, looking at the demo video from WebBay, you can actually link your existing Webflow site items. So for example, you can link components and you can also link collections. So for example, in my website, I have a tutorial collection and I can go ahead and reference that inside the prompt of the AI. I can also reference components that I've made, for example, a nav bar or a footer, and you can go ahead and prompt the AI, for example, to say, please look at my tutorial collection and make me a directory with filterable collections. And this goes really crazy. Looking at the demo video from Webflow, they did CMS map points, as well as filtered items with the CMS. And everything is also branded. So once you do this, you can go ahead and hit submit, and this will submit the prompt. And like in the Webflow video, you're gonna have to just wait, you know, like five to 10 minutes, because, you know, AI is not instant anymore. But from my understanding, this is very similar to programs like Claude, essentially vibe code. This really seems like vibe code. And I honestly never vibe code before, but this literally feels like vibe code. So you can see right now, the AI is literally writing all the entire code in the back end and it's saying what it's doing. Like it's updating, it's referencing the CMS collection for my tutorial, 
and you can even prompt it even more just like ChatGPT. Very powerful stuff and you'll notice at the top it says code and preview. You can actually preview what the site will look like and you can also deploy the site at the top right. From my understanding it's not really uh, that perfect yet but it's getting pretty perfect. So while we wait for this to load let's go ahead and move on to update number six. Create CMS powered experiences across the channel. So again, you'll notice Webflow has pushed a lot of ability using AI and using different cloud services to do more of the backend stuff. To essentially, from my understanding, push Webflow's current capabilities. Because in my opinion, Webflow excels very, very hard in a marketing site. Where it falls short is perhaps an advanced e-commerce functionality or some sort of logic functionality, which they actually had previously, but now it's retired. So in this specific update, from my understanding, this increased the API of CMS. So you can actually link different apps. This allows more flexibility if you're more of a backend developer. So it's really, really cool stuff. I'm not gonna dive into it too much. Move on to the final update. See comments on the canvas while you work. We head back to our Webflow project, you'll notice we can see all the comments directly on the canvas. You'll notice I had a comment from last time. If we click into it, it just opens up the comment. We no longer have to click the comment button on the top right. In order to see comments, you can actually just click on it, which is pretty intuitive. Let's quickly dive back into the AI prompt of the website and see what it has spat out. Wow, as you can see right now, I've given it very little prompt and it literally pulled all my CMS items from Webflow and it's showing 46 out of 46 tutorials, which is correct. And I literally gave it no design prompt. Keep that in mind. And it's literally giving me a search bar with different search functionalities, filters, which work live. So that's a great thing about this is it's almost like an app where you can actually use complicated functionalities. Like in this case, it's a search functionality right here. For example, right now, I can only click one of them but I can re-prompt the chat to say, hey, make it so that the filter can select one or more. You can, you can keep fine tuning it. And you'll notice that the design is in theme with my current website. And if we hit view tutorial, this takes us to a different page and it also designs that page, which is crazy. So you can see right here, it shows you what it may look like. So again, I don't think it's there yet where it can replace us human beings, but it's getting very, very close. Like I've given it a very, like a very generic prompt. So imagine if I just spend more time, this can definitely replace developers in the future. And this really excels if you understand how to code websites. If you don't, and you're just using vibe code all the time, it gets a bit tricky. And I hope it doesn't get to the point where you don't even have to know how to do back end or how to do front end or even know how to design and you just rely on AI 100%. I definitely don't think we're there yet, but I really hope my job is not ruined. Anyways, guys, my name is Derek Su. I hope you enjoyed this video. In my YouTube channel, I actually provide many free Webflow tutorials, which you can check out right here. I also have made two previous videos on Webflow updates, so definitely check them out right here as well. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.